So a word about uh, Cyril Barnes. Uh, I'm pleased that so many of you have met him. Many, of course, present uh, have not had that opportunity. It was my privilege to meet him back in 1974. That's, uh, I think it's about 39 years ago, is it? The accountants amongst us will verify that. Our Salvation Army leaders had decided that my wife Helen and I, with our first child Matthew, who was then only a year old, would go to Africa to serve in Rhodesia at the Army's boarding school for boys at Mazoe. We were newly commissioned lieutenants and had to wait six months for the visas to come through. We lived in Ballon, gateway to the very good. We, we, we lived in Balham in South London in a house modified into two large flats. Our downstairs neighbor was none other than Colonel Catherine Baird, the army's finest poet, who arranged with her friend, Commissioner Kathleen Kendrick, for me to work in the IHU literary department until our visas came through. Now, Cyril Barnes was at that time the Assistant Literary Secretary. I can see him now, always busy, bustling about, a uh, twinkle in his eye, short in stature, but large in outlook, kindly by nature, and with a ready word of encouragement for a young officer of no reputation at all. Now, here I'm name dropping, Cyril and I, and Frederick Coots, incidentally, share the same birthday, 21st of September. Make a note, I'll expect more cards than usual this year, okay? 21st of September. Uh, Cyril was born on that date in 1912, the year my mother, Alice Shaw, work it out for yourself, Alice Shaw was born. Uh, Cyril entered the training college from Buckingham in 1932, aged 20. Married to Chrissy Small, he served in many corps appointments before being assigned to the IHU editorial and literary department to assist in editing the officer magazine. Later, he was the book production officer and editor of the annual yearbook and uh, the assistant literary secretary with the rank of lieutenant colonel. He retired from active service in 1977 and devoted his energies to establishing the International Archives and Research Center at IHQ. Hence, we remember him and honor him tonight as an archival pioneer. Now, from my own bookshelves, I've brought with me just three of Cyril's books. This little thing entitled Any Questions, some of you may have it, came out in 1958, and this speaks for itself. It went through no less than six editions until 1986, and it deals in pithy fashion with 37, you can see how small the book is, so the writing is very tight and concise and good. It deals with 37 basic questions about the Salvation Army. Uh, next, God's Army was published by Lion Books. It was, that's an outside publishing house, which speaks for itself, in 1978. It contains wonderful photographs of Army life and work. I think it's a truly first-rate publication, uh, and we can be proud that the Army uh, released it with the help of Lion Publishing. And finally... Uh, I've got uh, with William Booth in London, dated 1986, in which Cyril, using maps and pictures, guides us through the streets and sites of William Booth's London. Now, I think I'm correct in saying, tell me if I'm wrong, that Cyril started the tours. Is that right? Taking people around the historic spots. Genty, is that right? Yes, good. And uh, others uh, have 
continued uh, that good and helpful work. Many will remember Cyril Barnes as the Corkadet Guardian and later the, the Young People's Band Leader at the Ilford Corps in North East London. My son John and daughter-in-law Naomi are presently the corps officers there and I feel that's another nice link tonight with the memory of Cyril Barnes, the Ilford Corps. Cyril's daughter, Pauline Russell, uh, remembers her dad, and these are her own words, as a true English gentleman, small of stature and always walking along briskly with his hands behind his back. When he rose to preach, this is what she says, when he rose to preach on an army platform, he became a giant. I just think that's lovely. Uh, she recalls also that her dad each night, dad's, listen, my son's here listening to this. She recalls also that her dad each night would clean the children's shoes and leave them outside their bedroom doors. Like a five-star hotel. And just to complete the picture, it seems Cyril also liked chocolate. Now that's something we can all identify with. I won't ask for a show of hands. Eventually, Cyril stepped aside from his innovative work as archivist and he was more than pleased when the then Major Genty Fairbank was appointed as the IHQ archivist, and it's nice that Genty's here tonight. A word about our heritage centers. Uh, 